Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Talk Time with Val. I'm your hostess with the most is Val and Eastama. And I honestly thought that we would not be having a show tonight because my producer, Jimmy, had some technical issues going on. We tried to get it fixed and we couldn't. But lo and behold, we have Hayes Man, Matt Hazley, to the rescue. Hey, Matt. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. So, um, how was your evening, Matt? <coughs> okay, all right. I didn't even know until I heard your voice, like, speaking from my computer. But it's a good thing that we walked in. It was very fortuitous that we walked in right at the very moment. So, yay. Um, so what should we talk about? I had a few things lined up. Now, Matt, you, this is something you might uh, know a little bit about. But if you're busy and you have to go AFK, that's fine. Right? So let me know. Are, are you able to chat right now? Or are you busy? Okay, so you know that there are 13 states that drug test welfare recipients, right? And 19 more are giving it consideration, like they're thinking about doing it. Now, all the statistics that come back are telling them that it doesn't pay to drug test welfare recipients because in order to drug test them, from what I've read, apparently what they do is they give them a written examination and there's nobody who double checks it so they could just lie basically do you have a history of drugs yes or no if they say no then they won't test them if they say yes then they will test them isn't that nuts what's the point in having that drug test right or they would do random samplings but Drug testing for welfare recipients um, is actually a really, really huge drain um, for, you know, the American taxpayer. Basically, what's going on is that they are, they are take, they're spending a ton of money to have people who will administer a test that everybody is able to lie on because they have no way of double checking it. They don't cross reference it, ask for medical records or anything else, right? History data. Um, the drugs that make you um, uh, non eligible or ineligible, sorry, are drugs like meth and um, heroin. And even then, they don't really make you ineligible. What they do is you have to go to a mandatory. Um, drug rehab program that the state pays for and then you're you know you get your welfare back but even then they don't cut all of your welfare if you fail the drug test they pay for your rehab so how is this helping us right But here's the thing. I can personally tell you that I know people who play that system. They don't have a job. They don't want a job. I remember where I used to live, right? It was just north of Ferguson. And there were, no, no, we, um, we bought a house, thank God, that is in a nice area. And, you know, we, we've been blessed, thank God. But, um... Where I used to live there, I, I, I met a bunch of people, and some of them are, I mean, they're nice people, they're god fearing people, but they're just, I'm sorry, but lazy. All they want to do... Yeah? Okay. Yeah. 
Yep. Oh, yeah. You know, you want to... I don't want to see that I'm paying, let's say cable, for example. I don't want to see that I'm paying $160 for cable to get, you know, um, this NFL package and whatever, whatever, for my sports packages, because John loves sports, right? And for my internet and my phone. And somebody who I know literally pays, like, a few dollars a month for rent, because the government subsidizes the rest. I'm talking about they have a, a place, right? that is bigger and nicer than mine and they're they're looking to move and they can be like oh well you know once we spend under 2500 or, or under 3000 we're good the government will allow that and they literally pay like 12 dollars a month on that and but 12 dollars right and here's the other thing that really pissed me off about that um they get cable cable is not a basic necessity you do not have a right to cable, right? <coughs> they, they No, wait, wait, I'm not I'm I'm not done with my cable point. No, but okay, the thing is having a phone, having a phone in this day and age, right, if you are out and working, if you are out and working, is somewhat of a necessity because I do know that I know a couple of people who, like one one girl, she's a mother of two and she's um, working um, and going to nursing school at the same time, right? And that phone really helped her out because sometimes the buses wouldn't come so she could call a neighbor to ask them to pick her up at the bus station, you know? she was running late or something so there are situations where that's valid but something like cable I'm sorry why do you need a gold package tear in cable where you get NFL red zone every part of ESPN all the you know every channel you want Showtime HBO you know whatever it is right you get all those channels and you're paying half the price that I'm paying and I don't even have all those packages <coughs> why how is that how is that necessary? How is it that you could justify something like working for literally two, three weeks, and then you know that you're going to be drug tested, so you smoke marijuana, and you get dismissed, and then if you get fired, I should think that if you get fired for drug usage or failing a drug test, that they will not give you unemployment. You would think so, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. I, I completely agree with you because I do know some people that need it, but then there are some people who just abuse it. They are fully capable of working, and so they do. They do work on, on the sly. And they get their check and their income. And while you are, like, saving up and watching your pennies so that you could have a nice date night, they are, you know, so instead of buying takeouts and whatever, whatever, you're cooking at home and you're packing your lunch and, you know, you're basically just watching your pennies, right? You're being responsible, which you should do anyway. But while you're doing that so that you can enjoy a good date night and you can save up money so at the end of the year you'll have something they're not doing that they're spending they'll casually go out and be like oh well i want uh uh what is it called um 
the Starbucks iced coffees. So I'm going to get one of those and a candy bar and this and that. And it's like every single day they're going to spend $10, $20 on that. And then come tax season when you are, you know, looking at your little pittance, they're getting, and I'm not even kidding you here, over $6,000 because they worked for a couple of weeks during the year. Over $6,000. How do you get that? How is that even possible? For each kid, apparently, you, you're, you're granted a couple thousand dollars. Well, how are you granted money as a tax refund? John and I were talking about this. We were trying to figure out how is it that somebody is granted money as a tax refund when they haven't earned that money and put it into the tax system during the year? Yes, but the government has been paying for the kids throughout the year. That's what I don't understand. That's what we don't understand. Really? Oh, yeah, that makes no sense whatsoever. That, that it kind of, it just, it, it really bothers me because... It's not just, and the thing is, it's not just like a certain demographic. It's not just a certain, you know, people like who are in poor areas or something. There are a lot of people who play the system who have nice houses, nice cars, and they just, they play the system. They abuse it for everything they're worth because they just want everything they can get, right? But here's the thing. They don't give a damn about everybody else out there. So... I, I know somebody who is currently, they, okay, allegedly use drugs. It is my strong, strong feeling that they do because the behavior, you have to understand the pattern, the behavior, right, psychologically. The, the way they behave, what they do, their reactions, the episodes they have, things like that, right? Um known to interact with and disappear with heroin addicts and yet and claims that they've only tried it a couple times but they're not addicted you know what i'm saying so that person gets has a record by the way gets free medical service um like do you know that if you have done meth and your teeth fall out that the government will pay for you to have full dentures, like full replacement, beautiful teeth put in. Yeah. And if you have seizures, right, you get extra, um, what you might call it, like extra benefits, yeah? And you have extra medical. I, I get that. If you're getting seizures, you do need to be checked. You do need to be on special medications, etc. But then how the hell if you have seizures and that's on your record and that's what you're doing? How do you get a car? How do you get a license? Like, how is that possible? me for live too. I'm trying to figure it out. I um I I just it I'm trying to figure it out because it's there monitoring need, yes system. correct there needs to be some type of uh checks and balances or whatever well we, yeah. we believe that we all believe that and with that checks and balances, we, when we talk about that, we're considered, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, rude or bigots or something like that. Which Listen, I, I, I am a brown woman, right? Um, my husband is the only income coming in right now. It's not like, I mean, we, sh we, we struggle, make ends meet, and we, we bought a house, we saved up. We pay our taxes. We get no refunds. You know what I'm saying? Like, no big refunds or anything like that. Things are going to change now because my paperwork's done and I'm, you know, getting a job. Like, you know what I'm saying? But 
How the hell can people look at me and say, well, you're bigoted or whatever? No. You know what I am? I'm outraged. I'm outraged that a woman who has not worked a day in her life can spread her legs, do her business, pop out some children, and expect society to take care of them. You know what? If you can't take care of them, put them in the, the, the system, let somebody adopt them. Otherwise, get off your butt do something about it. Now, if you're unhealthy, incapable, unable, I understand that, right? I do, I get that. You need help. But in situations like that, if they need help, then there should be a secondary party, like counselors, who look in on that family, like, you know, at strategic points, and assess and evaluate, okay? And that's fine. But what about the young people who are fully capable of working and who are just, they, because they grew up on welfare and they know the system, are on the welfare system. What about the other people who play the system and you see them running around with Escalades and they're buying fancy new computers and they have the best phones and everything, everything, everything. The government is, and they, they will brag and tell you the government is paying for their housing for everything. Right? They get food stamps and they abuse it because they sell the food stamps. Those people, you don't even have a system of checks and balances for them. Those are the people I am outraged by because those are the people that are draining the American society, draining the American economy. And hardworking people like you, Matt, when you're ready to retire, instead of being able to retire at the age of 60 or 65, the average American now has to work 10 extra years. There's no real pension. There's no real social security fund. You get what I'm saying? I'm outraged. So if you want to sit there and think that I'm a bigot... No, 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 no. I'm not saying you, you are, but no, I'm saying I people I'm think talking, that. I'm talking to the public here right now. If you want to sit there public and think that I'm a bigot, or you want to sit there and think, oh, well, you don't know how hard it is. You know what? Yes, I do. But I also know what it is to be responsible. I know what it is to have eleven dollars to my name and say, "Hey, instead of going and buying a freaking Big Mac meal, I'm gonna go buy a bag of rice and a bag of beans and some, you know, a can of peas or whatever it is, or dried peas because it's cheaper. And I'm gonna make that stretch for the week until I have my pay coming in." I know what it is to not run up debt because you're going to have to pay interest. I know what it is to be responsible. I know what it is to say, hey, I don't need that. I just want it, so I'm not going to buy it. See, that's the difference in society today. People want to make their mess, pop out their children do their do and have everybody else take care of it they expect and if you make the mistake of giving even a little bit then they will never let it down they will just keep taking and taking and taking until they suck you dry or you finally come to your senses and pull away and that's what the american system needs to do, come to its senses and pull away, wean them off. If, if you have to have a job and you have to fill out paperwork for, to get medical insurance and stuff, right? Why is it that the paperwork you have to fill out for welfare is less stringent than that? I, my, it's, it goes the same thing as when people go, why do they need a voter ID card? You know, I think there's many things that you have to do in this life that you need an ID <laughs> a card for. A voter ID card or an ID card? In order to it, it doesn't matter. Yes. I mean, it, it can no, be just a regular ID. Things. The exactly. ID can be right. for getting welfare. The ID could be getting, you know, anything. Yeah, but you need an identification Correct. card in order to vote because, hello, um, you're, you're, they, they'll know you already voted and you can't go and vote again. That's how it works. That's right. That's just simply how it works. You know how we do it back in Trinidad? Of course, we're a tiny little country, right? But we have an ink that stains your cuticle, your nail, everything. It, they make you dip your finger, your pointer finger, 
into a sponged inkwell. And it stains so bad, Matt, that I don't care if you tried to bleach it or whatever. You would literally have to rip your nail off to get it out. And they make you... Um, they make you do that as soon as you come out of the polling booth. It stays on your hand for a week. Yeah, I've seen a lot of the countries that have that. Yeah. You have a little purple finger, but you know what? So what? <laughs> right? No, it, 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 show, it shows it. Manicure, but no, it, so show, it shows. Uh, well, I, I think it's also patriotic to go vote. Your your civic so duty. Too. It is. I don't I care who so. you vote for, just to go vote. Dude, my dad was a member of parliament. I grew up in this. I agree wholeheartedly. It's not just your civic duty. It's, it's not just your responsibility. Damn, people, it's your right. Do you get that? It's not something somebody's forcing on you. It's something you should be so appreciative of having the ability to do. It's like, it's your right. You should fight for it. You should want to do it. There's a lot of countries, or people in countries, that would love to have the right <laughs> to go vote. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I just, I don't get, um, I don't get how, how people take it so for granted. Everybody wants the American dream, and yet the American dream has become quite a nightmare. Have you noticed that? Well, the thing about it's changed what the people think of the American dream is. No. They, they, no, I'm talking that. about is they don't realize that it has, you have to fight for it. It's not just sit there and give it to me. Well, that's the thing. Everybody else in other countries, right? Look at it this way. Let me, let me put it in perspective for you. Let's say Guyana. Do you, you know the country of Guyana? It's rather yep. large. It is about, I would say it's about eight or nine degrees north latitude. Um, it is just below Venezuela, uh, just below Trinidad and Tobago. It is that little L-shaped piece that sticks out underneath the Caribbean islands. You have Guyana, French Guyana, and Suriname, okay? Now, look at Guyana. 25 years ago, a loaf of bread in Guyana cost $500 Guyanese money. That's how bad the economy was. People would get paid enough to buy for the week, let's say they're working weekly, enough to buy, like to pay whatever rent they had and whatever. And it would usually be four people, four sets of working people sharing an abode so that they could pay the rent. And they would be, you know, let's say, able to buy for the week one loaf of bread, a couple cans of tuna fish. They would basically grow their food because buying flour, buying sugar, buying things like that was ex was expensive, right? Diana went through some hell, man. Okay, Chile did a number on that country, right? Now, take Guyanese people. They moved to Trinidad illegally. Okay? And people in Trinidad were like, oh, well, they're taking the jobs. And the majority of people turned around and said, who are taking the jobs? You mean people who are willing to work for $12 an hour and actually, you know, they, they're grateful for it? They're taking your jobs? Why aren't you willing to work for that? Now, mind you, um, that's above minimum wage, right? But nobody really pays underneath that unless they're scum and nobody would have it anyway. They would be run out of the town. It's really a, a 1950s mentality when it comes to things like that. Neighbors look out for neighbors, you know? But people were like, oh, they're taking the jobs. Well, no. No, because if you were willing to get off your butt and do it, then there would not be a demand for that type of worker. Now, in Trinidad, it's different because there was a push towards education wherein... Um, like by the time you're 10, 11, 12 years old and going into high school, they give you a laptop. And that laptop is connected to the ministry server. We have free tertiary education, free medical, you know, um, care. Scholarships are bound because the country pushes towards, uh, it really fights and pushes towards education, right? So we didn't mind that. 
for a logic sense, people coming in. Because we had industries that were failing because nobody was, you know, there were no gardeners and farmers anymore. Not big scale. The sugarcane industry was willing to the wayside because the, the farmers were taught in order to put their children into school so that they could become lawyers and doctors and engineers. You get what I'm saying? We now had a brain trust and not enough people to do manual and physical labor. Do you want to know we don't have a system of welfare back home? Do you know if you need assistance, what you have to do, Matt? You have to work four hours a day, five days a week for the government. You can, when they're mowing the lawns, you can pick up the grass. You can, you know, um, clean the drains. You can clean the parks. We have dozens and dozens and dozens of parks all over the place. And... Uh, there's a lot of fruit trees in the park, so you know you don't want bees and stuff hanging around. So they go and they rake the fruits up and stuff. Um, things like that, keeping the, the country clean and decent, um, helping fill potholes, you know, maintaining roads, whatever, right? That's what they did. That's what you do. If you don't put in 20 hours of work a week at minimum, then you do not get, you do not qualify to get those hampers for basically the food stamps and stuff like that. The only people who are exempt from that qualification are people who are physically unable to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you have if you have something like bipolar disorder, right? You are still mandated to put in that 20 hours a week. Because you know what? Your, your, your treatment is getting paid for. Your medication is getting paid for. Just like here. But again, I hear that over here, if you have bipolar disorder, that's considered a disability. So feed into the neurosis and the mania. And what happens? People don't want to help themselves because there's no need to help themselves. It becomes a self-perpetuating travesty, a quagmire. You get sucked into this literal depths of depression, and then you justify it by saying, well, they're saying this, and they're saying that, and I don't have to work, and they're paying me for it. So, yeah, I must be really, really badly off. Instead of saying, I have better things to worry about, like putting food on my table, keeping a roof over my head. Let me get out there and try and do something. You get what I mean, Matt? Yep. It gets difficult, right? Oh, yeah. I, I just, I mean, I know that we can't compare Trinidad to the U.S. because Trinidad is literally a dot on the map. It is so tiny. You can't go anywhere on the island without knowing somebody who knows somebody who knows your father. You know what I'm saying? That's how small it is, right? But, and, and because it's that small, it's, a lot like a smaller scape and a scope and, and scale and stuff and so the resources that the island have are enough to be spread around for everybody once you work hard if you don't work then you suffer right so yeah oh yeah i don't know i feel like i feel like I, it disgusts me that it disgusts me that somebody who and jeopardize somebody else's life by driving on the street gets a license. It disgusts me that people are proud to say, hey, I only pay $12 on a $1,000 bill. That's all the government expects me to pay. What kind of percentage is $12 on a $1,000 bill, Matt? 1.2%? Yeah, it'd be like one one point. Well, a little over one percent. Yeah, because hundred and twelve dollars would be ten uh, percent. No, a hundred dollars would be ten percent. Yeah, hundred and twelve dollars would be uh, on a thousand. Ten point. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred dollars on a on a thousand dollars would be ten percent. Correct. So you're looking at right. a dollar. One point two percent. Yep. A dollar. So. Twelve dollars would be one point two percent. Yeah. What is that? How how is that even possible? That you are allowed to pay one point two percent of your rent. Well, it's like then, it's like the people that say, "Well, you know, they work at a business and they and they say, well, that business should pay me more.'" I said, "Okay, let's say that business has a thousand employees, 
I understand that you feel like you're worth more than you are. Well, it's fine. But then they say, well, without a pay us across the board, whatever, a dollar an hour more or five dollars an hour more. I said, okay, let's say it's five dollars. Where do you make up the five million dollars that's taken out of their budget? And they go, oh, it's not that much. I said, well, you factor it out as many hours as each employee works. Add a dollar to it and add their unemployment insurance and all their everything going through that. Wait, wait, start that over. If you have a thousand employees, uh huh, and you give them a cross the board raise because people sit there and go, oh, they should pay us a dollar more an hour or whatever, or five dollars more an hour. It's a dollar more an hour is a million dollars a year. Okay. You fig- figure that out, and then they go, well, you know, take it out of their profits. Well. <laughs> you the the problem I have with people that say take it out of your profits is is somebody that owns that business didn't get into that business to break even. Right. They they and the people that work there But at the have, same time you don't want to be a scumbag and I'm Correct. But I'm talking it. about I'm not talking about anybody paying anybody and screwing anybody over. But I'm talking okay. about people think that they should get more this is the mindset they should oh, get more. Oh, you mean people who think that working in a fast food food job they should be paid fifteen dollars an hour. Correct. So they go, well, take it out of their profits. And I'm like, okay, uh, you had no risk with the losses if that business took any losses. It's like no, you see the he, football player. Football player wants part of the profits from the, the stadium and everything. Right. You have no loss if they if they do bad. If they have a bad year like the, my Bears – if they yeah. do, if they do bad, you don't have a personal stake. You'll that's up right. No, but You're still going to get paid. Is what it boils down to is, and and this is the simple, simplest things that I think Americans have forgotten. Society, economy is built on a law on the laws of supply and demand, and that's not just uh, the laws of supply and demand. Don't just um, apply to goods; they apply to services. If you are a customer service representative but you have a bad uh, attitude and you can't be bothered etc cetera, etc cetera, then no your skills are not in demand and you will lose your job if you are not cutting the mustard you will lose your job or you should unless of course you work for the government in which case apparently you are grandfathered in and you will forever be taken care of which makes no sense to me Right. Um, I, th- that brings me to incompetence that I don't even want to speak about. Now, if you are a fast food employee and you're standing behind a counter and you want to be paid fifteen dollars an hour, then you know what you can be. You know how you do that. You work. You tell them they see your hard work, and you know what they will promote you to assistant manager. They will train you and then you will actually be worth $15 an hour because you have now put in the work for it. I've seen, it's like a waitress at Denny's. You'll have some who barely make ends meet and some who will go home at the end of the day with $250 in tips because they know how to give customer service, which is essentially what they're doing. That's their job. So if you don't perform your job, why are you demanding more money? If you're sitting in an office and you agree to a certain amount of pay, then that's the pay you agreed to. If it does not cut it for you, you go in, you explain that to your boss, you ask for a raise. They negotiate with you. Either you're a valuable employee that they do not want to lose and they will try to accommodate you or you're not valuable enough and you can just get the hell out. The fact is too many people think um, that they are entitled to things that they are not entitled to. The laws of supply and demand are very, very simple. It's like this. I want, let's say, okay, Matt, you're attracted to your wife, right? Your wife is beautiful. You've been married for what, 26 years? 27. 27 years. You've been married for 27 years. Happily married to a lady that I have no idea how the hell she puts up with you. But she does. Right? Wonderful. What was the question again? When, how does she put up with you? No, that's I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) 
But when you are getting married, she must right? be on. You, she must be using drugs or something. To, <laughs> something, right? <laughs> yeah. But before you got married, for it to last twenty-seven years, look at this. Did you look at her and think, "Hey, my my laws of supply and demand demand that I want I want a brunette or I want a blonde," or did it say, "I want somebody who has this principle or that ethic"? I or, never even you know thought I mean? about that. I just thought about being able to coexist and, and, you know, work out our problems and everything and never thought about whether, I mean, we just, it was just weird how we came together. But because you clicked, right? That's because right. Because she filled a need that you had, you filled a need that she had. And the reason it lasted 27 years is because neither one of you felt unsatisfied enough to go to the boss and say, I want to raise or I want a divorce, right? Oh, of course. We you put, you got there's good and there's bad and everything. Exactly, and you felt satisfied. And just like in a job, there's good and there's bad. You have bad days, but on a bad day, if you quit, well, then you're just, honestly, you're just a crybaby. Suck it up and get the fuck out. Yep, that's me. <laughs> that's what she no. calls me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, be, I'll be right back. i got, I got to step away for a second. <laughs> okay. So all right, I think I got all your songs. It's like, how are you getting yourself to the point where you can demand you there for taking an order pressing a button you can demand fifteen dollars an hour well the company can't afford to pay you fifteen dollars an hour in order to do that they would take so many losses that it's easier for them to either outsource the jobs or to hey, get machines I didn't, I didn't to do it got disconnected everybody would love hey okay i got i'm gonna make sure i got all the raise, songs to be a living wage unfortunately for a living wage to I got occur, it. The I gotta, government would have to make changes. Essentially, I gotta, I, it would be a I got a free YouTube downloader thing. All you do businesses. is you just click on it. And it um, it's the only way that businesses could pass those profits <laughs> on to employees. Without yeah, so I got, but I got, I got lunatic fringe. I already got it. it. If you are but I, uh, Blue Oyster, let employer. me make sure I got the you song list. In it in order to I got uh, Beast of Bird, Jimi Hendrix, Paul McCartney. In order to progress and advance the to reinvest in it. What do you got? Talking about Mount Mississippi. Trying to break even by ZZ Top, your Judas Priest, Queen Under Pressure, Blue Oyster, Cold, Boston, Fleetwood Mac, and Foreigner. The only way a living wage is going to become feasible for the American people is if the American government steps in and says, you know what? We're going to stop taxing you into I got, oblivion. Uh, We're going to stop spending $600 billion on a defense fund and got, take one tenth of that and uh, put it towards an education coming. fund so that we can. Individually assess children at the age yeah, of two and three, and the very first, the send very them first to schools that are specially designed for their so type of learning. But I got that beast says, of bird, Jimmy Hendrix, and Paul McCartney. We're going to stop taxing you later. into submission. No, you no longer so have then, to. If so then you twenty percent of your that. paycheck when you're only uh, making four hundred dollars for the week. Do you know what twenty percent or five hundred dollars for the week? That's a hundred dollars in taxes. Okay, Beast of Bird, Jimi Hendrix, Paul McCartney. Right? All right. So then, imagine somebody uh, making next one is four hundred dollars. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, ACDC Highway weeks, to Hell. Right? I didn't have that. And they're making five hundred dollars. They're taxed basically a hundred dollars. Now, Led if Zeppelin. you're making five hundred thousand dollars and you're Guns taxed five hundred thousand, that's okay. You don't mind because you can more than live on the four hundred thousand. But when all right, you're so, all right, yeah, I'm seeing the sets now. I got them in a sets. A person breaking so I, I can put them in that order then. And you can't yeah, afford mandatory health care, which is ridiculous. So you're being taxed into oblivion. Are you going to call off the songs? For or not gonna... paying for that mandatory health care that they're trying to force down your throat. What happens? Are you going to say? Are you going to say something about ACDC? You're every two weeks can't and pay and your bill, so you take a second job to do it. And again, you're being up, taxed into oblivion. I think that. The system should be a little bit. Well, different. let me download them all. So I, I got about 20 minutes, so I'll get those make, downloaded. And then your taxes should increase okay, so by a gradient level. Yep. But if you make under, what if you make twenty-four thousand dollars a year, then I think your basic tax should be twelve percent. If you make thirty-five thousand dollars a year, that. your basic tax should be maybe sixteen or twenty-one percent. If you, you know, as you go up, like, okay, so $35,000 a year, 16%. $50,000 a year, 
that they should cap it off at 35%. Nobody should pay more than 35% of their earnings in taxes. But all these tax shelters that the 1% have, it's ridiculous. Their money earns money for them. They borrow against it. They never pay taxes because they get that shelter. And what happens? Little people get screwed. I don't agree. I think it's ridiculous. Now, I was reading an article today, and um, it was actually quite illuminating. It wasn't just on the um, on what states test for drugs, but the article. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. It was. Um, oh. Nope, oh, it's missing for right now. Let's see. Oh, the article um, focused on 10 productivity tips for procrastinators and 30 time management tips for work-life balance. Here's the thing. If you don't manage your time and value your time, then you're pretty much screwed, okay? In order to achieve anything, the first thing you need to do is humble yourself and realize that you are not the cat's meow. You are not the it. You are not the, the apple of somebody's eye. And your parents, you know what, when they told you that you were, they lied. They completely flat out lied. You are not the most special, the most precious, the most whatever. You might be to them, but not to the world. So you going out there and thinking that you are, you're going to get slapped down so hard. Fuck it up, buttercup. That's not how life works. You don't get a trophy for just showing up to work. You don't get it like, like you get a trophy now for showing up to sports. You get a trophy for actually trying. Now I'm saying, I'm not saying that the kid who tries his best shouldn't get a trophy. No. That's why you have awards like MVP or you have, you know, Miss Congeniality or you have um, Most Dedicated. You can have awards that, that say this person tried, right? And that's fine. But when you just give everybody a, 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 a trophy for just showing up and you say, hey, we don't want to make anybody feel bad, so they don't actually have to try. Everybody's special and good. And then you turn around and you have kids literally committing suicide because somebody was mean to them. Then we have a problem in society. The thing is, when it comes down to it, there's a thing called common sense, and it's not very common anymore. And people think that, like, I saw, this is... This is old news to everybody, but the protester who stood on the highway and got mowed down by a vehicle, what the hell was that about? Like seriously, you're protesting on a freaking freeway and you see a car coming down the freeway at 70 miles an hour and you decide to run out into the middle of the road, you deserve to get hit. Survival of the fittest, okay? If you're stupid enough to do that, you deserve to get hit. That's it. Just the end right there. Okay? But I can guarantee you Richard Branson never ran out into the middle of a freeway. Right? I can guarantee you that Warren Buffett never stood up and said, Well, I don't have to do that because my mommy and daddy said I was special, so I should get a medal for it. I can guarantee you that Mike... Canon Brooks never said, I don't have to try. You have to do it for yeah, me. So. In this underneath the sink. I don't I can guarantee you that Mark Cuban never attempted suicide because his feelings were hurt. Now here's the thing, right? <clears throat> suicide 
is an epidemic. It it's the most horrible thing in the world. And there are legitimate cases of people who are so depressed, chemically and emotionally, that they will, you know, they will do something to harm themselves. And I feel so abhorrently bad for them. And I pray for their souls and for their loved ones. It is the most horrible, awful thing you can go through. But when suicide happens, because blame is being passed, because nobody cares enough to notice, and because nobody actually makes an effort, when suicide happens because of a little thing like, and I see, yes, I say a little thing, a little thing like, it say, I don't want to be your friend, then you know what? As a as a as a kid, you go to your parents and you say, "Oh, these people said I didn't want to be my friend." Your parents explain to you, "Everybody doesn't have to be your friend. You should have to deal with that." But no, not in today's society. In today's society, well, oh, precious, you're so beautiful, you're so perfect. Everybody will love you, and then precious goes out into the world, and nobody likes them because they're a self entitled, spoiled little brat. And then what happens? Precious's self esteem goes down the, the tubes and they attempt suicide and then they claim people are bullying them now I, I do admit there's a lot of bullying that does go on and if you see it you should stand up and say something because evil thrives when good men do nothing so always stand up and say something but also man apply common sense where's the damn common sense going in this world it's ridiculous Okay, I don't know if you guys know who Andrew Mason is. He's the co-founder and former CEO of Groupon. I like Groupon, okay? I like anything that's going to give me a deal, right? Andrew Mason said, rather than give a specific piece of advice, I have tons, but none of it is rocket science. I'll just say that actually being disciplined about adopting these habits is, in my experience, a huge differentiator for successful people. If I was building a character in a business video game and I had 10 character points to distribute, I'd put three of them into intelligence and seven of them into self-discipline. Do you get that? It's not about how smart you think you are. It's about how dedicated you can be. It's not what about what you think you're owed. It's about what you've actually been, you know, what you've actually earned. Dustin Moskowitz, co-founder of the productivity app at, um, Asana and of Facebook, said, pick one day a week that you and your team can focus on getting individual work done without any interruptions like meetings. At Asana, we have no meeting Wednesdays established to encourage flow and productivity across the company. Meaning, again, it's about discipline and dedication. No minor breakups during the day. It's complete focus. What you have to do when you want to achieve something. We all know who Mark Cuban is, right? Owner of the Dallas Mavericks, Magnolia Pictures, Landmark theaters, you know, one of the sharks on Shark Tank. Our Cuban said, never do meetings unless someone is writing a check. You know what that means? It means your time is valuable. Your effort and energy are valuable. Don't waste your time pursuing things that are not going to make you some type of earning. Either earn you an education or earn you some actual money. As in, put out the effort and you will start receiving. A. In order to be successful, we have to do two things. One, we have to get out of our own way and stop believing too much in our own hype. And two, we have to be prepared to humble ourselves and dedicate ourselves and do the best that we can do. That's basically what it boils down to. Now, all right, I'm done ranting about that. Matt, are you back yet? Yep, I'm back. Okay, so I saw a video today on Facebook, right? Um, I actually 
got poked with it just now. It says um, Trump executive order advances contro uh, controversial pipelines. So, what's going on there? Did you see that? I haven't been it, able to check too much about it. I uh, I did see Trump what you're talking executive about. Executive actions to advance approval of the Keystone XL and Dakota Access oil pipelines. Yeah, I saw something about it, but I haven't been able to do too much reading on it. I just got home, so Look, I'm I'm in. I have been saying that for all the naysayers out there, give the man a chance. I've been saying, what what the hell? Like you know, somebody's before they even get in there, you're down his throat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? But that 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 the pipelines the water the access that to come in and write an executive order and overrun the army corps of engineers overrule them and for the advancement of the oil pipelines especially when the water crisis in america has gotten so great that there are literally you know large towns and states that are drinking poisoned leaded water that have to actually they can't get water out of the, the pipes and they have to buy water in order to drink it. And if anything happens to that pipeline, it will affect it will affect the heart belt of America, the heartland. That water feeds into the green, the crops. It feeds into middle America. If the Missouri River dies, yeah, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of also going through uh, Indian land where they, you know, it'd be like running it through a cemetery here in town. Right. I mean, and why? I why is it okay for us to do it to them? I think we need to do is take in I consideration think, and go around them. And and we need to respect the fact that, you know what, it's known history that we committed genocide on these people, stole their property, relegated them and kept pushing them back more and more and more and taking more and more, fine. They find they have the little areas that they have now. It's okay to treat them this way. It's okay to poison the waters, especially with a water crisis coming to America. And yes, there is a crisis. There have been towns, constituencies for two years buying water because they cannot drink the water in the pipelines. They can't water their plants with it. It's toxic. But you don't see that in mainstream media, do you? Well, I have a... Um, I should, probably shouldn't say this, but I have a friend of mine that is working on a project. And if it goes through, it will be revolutionary to oil. What it will do is... It's a product that's uh, biodegradable and it's not uh, harmful to, to... You know, to you can bathe in it you know right what it is is you spray it on oil and it turns it to soap okay so if it gets like a spill in the in so the like ocean molecular and and yeah it, it's a bonding agent what it no it actually dissolves it into soap well that's what i'm saying it, it has to bond at a chemical molecular level yes it breaks it down transmutes it into soap yeah okay he, he is working on uh you want another problem with that matt what Nitrates. Well, that they've already done is figured the out. The byproduct of soap, the nitrates, and those nitrates, um, if they increase algae levels and stuff, you have the Dead Sea occurring. Yeah, but the one thing, the well, I, I don't know, because what would you, it's either dead with oil or dead with nitrates, I, but I don't know. I They're working on the well, project no, the right now. Are, I mean, containment systems can be in place, and if he's bonding something at a molecular level, to make a, a chemical change, then I'm guessing that he would have factored in that because there are laws against nitrate emissions. For example, detergents, dishwashing liquids. Um, it's not. Know, it's not for. Effects. It's not up for for use yet. He's right. already done demonstrations with it for companies. Right. And he would. Know, and of and course, it's not in this country. It's out of this country. Nitrates. So it's a friend of mine that lives in another country that's doing Actually, it. Actually, you want to hear something really funny? America has more relaxed laws when it comes to environmental protection than a lot of 
the world. But just think about how, if, the, if it was able to do what it, what it, the intentions, just think what the ramifications it would be for, you know, these, you know, people that are, um, you know, I don't know what you want to call them, not tree huggers, but they're, they're, um, you know, environmental. I'm a tree hugger. But I'm talking about um, environmentalists. I if am. you can, if you can do is take care of the oil spills and stuff like that, they would be uh -huh. more friendly towards it. If you could do use something that will take care of it. If you had a containment system. Correct. Yes, they would be. Yes, but I'm sorry. Even if there was a containment system, running a pipeline through the let me put it this way matt why the hell was it okay to reroute the goddamn blasted pipeline from white communities and through an indian reservation and through the freaking water that these people have to use water that is considered to be sacred and holy to them oh it's okay to do it to them but they actually rerouted it from a white neighborhood for the same exact concerns that the Native American Indians are protesting about right now. The exact same reason. Why is that okay? It isn't okay. Exactly. It's and I not said okay. that. I know. But I, I know you said that, and I know who you are, so I get that. But I'm saying this is the most ridiculous and asinine thing that can be done. It is blatant. You know, it, it's like, it's a slap in the face blatant. It's like, I know you see me do it, and I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway, right? Because in my eyes, these white privileged people in this community matter more than some Native American Indians who don't contribute as much to my society, because this is my society. I have it pinpointed in this way, and I don't really care about them. Well, that's not something that a government can do because government is supposed to be for the people and by the people. I hate to tell you, Val. It's that time. I know. <laughs> That's all the time we have tonight for this episode of Talk Time with Val. I'm sorry that during the show my husband randomly broke in and asked me where the soap was. Uh, apparently he doesn't know how to open the sink, <laughs> the, the cupboard under the sink and look. For himself <laughs> I tell you 51 years old and you would swear he was three but I love I'm him seven. I love him <laughs> all right well that's all the time we have this week for this episode of talk time with Val and my rantings and ravings um, take what you want from it take what you need from it and of course express your own opinion <laughs> you feel free to message me at Valley Smart Radio or Talk Time with Val at gmail.com. And until next week, my lovelies, be well, be safe, and blessed be. Bye.